In this video, we'll review how to graph sine. Now this video will review how to graph sine in degrees. If you want to graph sine in radians, that's going to be on a separate video. Now recall our work with module 6, that with the Ferris wheel, we use sine to determine the height of the rider as he or she turns around the ride. We start the rider on the extreme right-hand side of the Ferris wheel. We call that the standard position. Standard position, extreme right-hand side, it's where the positive x-axis is. And then we rotate in a counterclockwise direction, which is a positive angle of revolution. So we, if we start the rider on the extreme right-hand side, their height is the same as the center height of the Ferris wheel. So we'll call that height the center height. They're going to rotate till they get to the top, and at the top, that's going to be their maximum height. From that maximum height, they're going to keep rotating to the extreme left-hand side, in which case their height is back to being the center height. From the extreme left-hand side, they rotate down to the bottom. At the bottom, that's going to be their minimum height. From the minimum, or bottom, they're going to rotate back to the center on the right-hand side. At this point, they've gone one complete revolution, and their sign has gone from center to maximum to center to minimum to center. This means when we graph a sine function, we go center, max, center, min, and back to center. And that'll be one complete cycle for sine. Now for the function notation, f of x equals a sine b quantity bx plus k is going to be the general form for sine, where a is the amplitude, b is the frequency, and k is the vertical shift. Now some books may use a different letter for vertical shift. I'm going to use k because that's what we used for all the function notations when we've done transformations. k is always the vertical shift. Now let's turn our attention to frequency. The frequency is what changes the period of the sine graph. A higher frequency graph will have a shorter period, whereas a lower frequency will have a longer period to complete a sine wave. The period can be found by taking 360 and divided by the frequency, or the frequency can be found by taking 360 and dividing by the period. That is because the period times the frequency is always 360. We say BP equals 360. Now I'm going to cover phase shifts or horizontal shifts in a separate video. So let's look at a couple examples of sine graphs. We're going to graph these two, fun these two equations, y equals 3 sine of x and y equals negative sine of x plus 3. So for the first one, y equals 3 sine x, the amplitude is 3. To find the period, we first need to think about the frequency. Now this is y equals 3 sine of x, it's just 1x, so b is 1. 360 divided by 1 tells me the period is 360 degrees. That means it goes through a full revolution in 360 degrees, which means the full sine will happen in 360 degrees. That means I need to go four ticks over, and that's going to be my 360 mark. Half of 360 is 180, so the second tick mark would be 180, and then half of that would be 90. The first tick is 90. Or you can just go 360 and divide by 4, which is 90 degrees, and that means every tick mark is going to be 90 degrees apart. So 90, 180, 270, 360, and so on. The scaling for the y-axis, we see that there is no vertical shift, k is 0, and the amplitude is 3, which means we need to have at least 3 tick marks up and 3 tick marks down. The max will be 3, and the min will be negative 3, centered at 0. Now sine goes center, max, center, min, and back to center. So when we graph this, we're going to start at 0, 0. That's our center. The next will be the maximum, which in this case is going to be up 3, so when we go to the 90 degree mark, we're going to be up 3. Sine goes center, max, which we now have, and now we're going to go back to center. So the next tick mark will be at center, and then down to minimum. So at 270 degrees, we're at the minimum, which is negative 3. And then back to center. Sine goes center, max, center, min, center. If we do our tick marks in this fashion, each tick mark is going to be one of those pieces of the cycle. Now I usually do two cycles, which means I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. I'm going to do another from center, max, center, min, center. And that would be two cycles, or two periods, of our sine graph. And then we draw the curve. For the next problem, this is a negative sine. Now it just says y equals negative sine of x plus 3, which means our amplitude is still 1, but it's going to start by going center to minimum. There is a vertical shift in this case, k is now 3. That means we're going to start 3 units up. To find the period, we need to first find the frequency. It is just a 1x, which means b is 1, and 360 degrees divided by 1 tells me the period is 360 degrees. 
Now this time I actually scale it. The other graph was scaled for me, this time I need to do it. The full cycle is going to be 360 degrees, which means my fourth tick should be 360 degrees. Half of that would be 180 degrees, so the second tick would be 180. Now, I don't normally scale every tick mark. I usually just do the half cycle, the full cycle, a cycle and a half, and two cycle. Basically, every other tick mark. Otherwise, it gets a little bit cluttered. So my horizontal scaling would look like this. The fourth tick, the full cycle being 360. Two full cycles would be 720 degrees. That would be the eighth tick. Now, vertically, this thing is shifted up three units. So my center is going to be at three. The amplitude is one, which means we need to go one unit above that and one unit below that. The max would be 3 plus 1, which is 4, and the minimum, 3 minus 1, is going to be 2. So I need to have at least these three numbers, the min, the center, and the max, scaled out. Now it's always good to throw some other numbers, so to the bottom would be negative 3. The center line is going to be 3. So this graph has a center line, or vertical shift, up 3 units. From there, we're going to start at center, and then we're going to go to a uh, minimum. This is a negative sign. Normally we go center max. Negative sign goes center min. So at the 90 degree mark, we're going to be at a minimum. In this case, one de unit down from our center line. So the minimum is going to be two. So there's our minimum. So negative sign goes center, min, back to center, to max, and to center. And that would be one full cycle of a negative sign graph. Now again, I like normally doing two cycles, so I'll repeat it. So from center, minimum, center, max, center. And that's going to be two complete cycles for our negative sine graph. And then we draw the curve. Now here's two more examples. I've changed it up a little bit. Why don't you go ahead and try these, pause the video, work it out, and then resume the video when you're ready. I'll give you a moment. Alright, let's see if you've got it right. For the first problem, we have just y equals sine 2x, which means the amplitude is 1. The frequency here, the 2, tells me that b is 2, which means 360 divided by 2, tells me the period is only 180 degrees. This thing will complete one complete cycle and only 180 degrees. So here, the fourth tick mark is going to be that 180 degrees. There is no vertical shift, so k is 0. So when I go to scale my x-axis, I'm going to go to my fourth tick and I'm going to call that 180 degrees. The second tick mark would be half of 180 degrees, or 90 degrees. And if I want to scale the first tick mark, half of 180, or half of uh, 90 becomes 45 degrees. So it's going to look like this. Again, I usually only scale every other mark. Now this is a positive sign with no vertical shift, which means it's going to start at center, which in this case is 0. It's going to go in a positive sign, which means it now goes to max, which in this case amplitude is 1, so up 1, back to center, to min, to center. And that's going to be one complete cycle or one complete period. Now normally I do two periods, so from center we go back to max, to center, to min, to center, and now that's two complete cycles. And then we sketch the curve. For problem number four, the amplitude is three, there is no vertical shift, the frequency is six, which means the period is going to be 360, degrees divided by 6. The period is only going to be 60 degrees. That means the fourth tick is going to be 60 degrees, which means the second tick, or half a period, is going to be 30 degrees. And if I wanted to do the uh, first tick mark, or a quarter cycle, that would only be 15 degrees. So it's going to look like this. Now this time I need to put the max and min in. The center is 0, amplitude is 3, which means our maximum is going to be 3, and our minimum is going to be negative 3. So we need to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. Now it is sine, so it starts at center, in which case there's no vertical shift, so the center is at 0. Now this is a negative sine graph. Negative sine graphs go center, min, center, max, center. So when we do this, our quarter cycle will be at the bottom. So that's min, center, max, up at 3, and then back to center. There's one complete cycle of our negative sine graph. To do a second cycle, we go from center to min, to center, to max, and back to center. And that'll be two complete cycles. And then we draw the curve. Alright, thank you for watching this video, and hopefully it refreshed how to do sine in degrees.